Whether you're a seasoned traveler or new to life on the road, we all make mistakes. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you six of the biggest mistakes people make when they're stealth camping. But let's chat somewhere a little bit nicer, hey? So the first two mistakes that I commonly see people making is that they park before sundown and then they leave too late. Now, there is a really common belief between stealth campers, van lifers, and others that you should minimize yourself as much as possible and leave no trace. When you end up staying for an extended period of time, you end up leaving the trace of yourself. Whether or not you leave trash behind or anything like that isn't the issue. The issue is, is that people will clock how long you've been there and kind of start questioning things. If you're there before nightfall, it's more likely that someone might clock you after they've gotten home from work or if they've gone for their afternoon walk, they'll see you getting very comfortable out front of their place or in their park or something. And the point of being a stealth camper is to be stealthy. So what I would recommend doing, and is this is what I usually do, is I will go to a nice park or go to the beach or even a parking lot if there's nothing nice around and I will make myself my dinner, enjoy the sunset. And then once it gets past sunset, then I will start thinking about where I'm camping for the night. And then I will find that place and go to bed straight away. And then once I get up in the morning, I usually try and get up around sunrise and then I leave. And personally, I really like doing this because then you're not overstaying your welcome like a bad guest and you're just making sure you're minimizing your presence as much as physically possible. This next one, you guys are probably going to think, well, you haven't done it, so why should I? But this is something that I do believe is a mistake that I have personally made, and that is that I did not invest in my stealthiness. I think it can be harder for people that do have multiple windows in their van. Mine is just windows all around, and I actually loved that about my van in the beginning, but having really high quality curtains kind of separates you from the outside world, and obviously creates privacy for you, but also gives a sense of comfortability for the person that's outside. As a van lifer, I can clock a van lifer from a million miles away. But I have noticed that when someone has better privacy screenings, I feel a little bit more comfortable with that person being around. I'm not sure why, maybe it's just because like, I'm like, okay, cool, they're happy being in there. Or maybe I'm concerned for them and their safety. Not too sure, but it's just something that I've noticed. So definitely invest in it if you can. So another common mistake that I see people making, but I know that this is a little bit controversial. I've had this discussion with a couple of people in my own comments is parking in patrolled areas. Now for me, that I have noted is like ovals or parks, sometimes even beaches as well. Any area where it feels like a cop car probably needs to patrol for a certain reason, to minimize certain behaviors, if you know what I mean. And I actually have a really funny story about that. I, <laughs> I was parked up at a park. I wasn't planning to stay there for the night. I just wanted to go to the loo, went to the loo, came out of the toilet block, and then all of a sudden there was this bright light. And I was just like deer in headlights and the cops had used a floodlight on me to kind of just let me know that I was not welcome there. And of course I promptly got in my van and left. Um, <laughs> it was a really like, not necessarily a scary experience, but it certainly made me feel very uncomfortable. And you know, if I had already been asleep, I'm sure that they would have turned their floodlights on anyway. And if I hadn't have left, they would have certainly come knocking. So. For myself, I know that I like to personally try and camp elsewhere, but I know that some of the people in my comments have previously said that some built up industrial areas that don't have any patrols tend to be really good spots as well. So maybe you can go there instead. Another big issue that I see with van lifers is that they leave their lights on. And I don't mean headlights, of course, sometimes that happens to the best of us, but I mean the fairy lights inside. Obviously when you've parked up at night, it's nice and dark, but then you've got your fairy lights just twinkling out of your van and you've just kind of just given away your entire operation. Really, you should turn them off. You know, you can watch your YouTube videos and stuff, but keep all your lights down low unless you know for a certain fact that you've actually managed to keep all the light inside your van. I know that most people haven't gotten to that step, but that tends to be a very luxury vehicle sort of thing to do. But for people like myself that don't exactly have the budget to just go ahead and window tint their entire van, I would recommend turning your lights off as soon as you jump in. So this final mistake that I don't see too many people making, but it does sometimes happen, is that people use the same location multiple nights in a row. Personally, I never like to stay in the same place each night. I always like to move on, 
because much like leaving no trace, you don't want to be like just making a habit of staying in front of one particular house or one particular park or anything like that, because then it becomes a habit. You do start to feel comfortable once you've found a spot that is, you know, safe for you, but then it starts taking an effect on the community. So sometimes I might find a really safe community and I will park in one area, but then I'll go park on the other side of the community the next night. And so then I know that they're still safe, but I've kind of separated myself to the point where, you know, I'm not staying in front of someone's house multiple nights in a row because that just starts being weird. I know that stealth camping in general is certainly a bit of a hot topic as to whether or not people should be doing it. I like to look at it from my own perspective of, okay, if there was someone stealth camping in front of my house, how many days would I feel comfortable with that? If they were doing everything that we've discussed in this video, honestly, I'd probably be happy with someone stealth camping in front of my place for about two days. But then after that, it starts getting a bit weird, starts becoming a pattern, and then you start questioning things. So definitely don't stay around for much longer than that. But let me know if any of these mistakes are something that you've done in the comments below, and I will see you in our next adventure.